Right on the button. I think I timed that one well. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another Photography Locked Down. How exciting. How exciting. I'm convinced you all hate me because this was a really tough one as well. Week on week, it's been getting harder and harder and harder for me to choose things because the level is becoming incredible. But also what is even more incredible, I think, is the level of effort is that kind of die-hard persistence to try and that is the buzz that is just completely fantastic so a um, couple of things i just wanted to announce one is been working for quite some time to get some webinars set up we did the first one with our runners up a few days ago and it, and it was really cool and they are now available on my website if anybody would like to come on a webinar about some very specific things, go and have a look. I will put a link into the description of this uh, live broadcast when we're done because I forgot to do it before we started. Um, where are we? So we're also making a bit of progress on the post-lockdown, post-photography lockdown PLD group idea thing because lots of you had said you'd be prepared to pay a small monthly fee to keep it going. Um, I really want to do it because A, I'm enjoying it, but of course, it has got to pay for its time. We're working on something. It would be premature to say much about it right now. But we will do something and we'll have an announcement for you very, very soon. Um, what else did I want to say? I just wanted to say how proud I am that we've got 3,000 different opinions. And everybody's respecting each other. That's a pretty tall order for any group of people anywhere. I am so blown away by that. I think it's incredible and I love the support that everybody is showing for those expressing doubts about their ability. And if you are one of those people, look, no one was born knowing this stuff, right? Everybody had to go through a learning process of, you know, going, oh, I'm disappointed, it's not what I wanted. Don't, 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 don't do that. It's, it's not about that. Um, and don't overthink things. Uh, there was quite a lot of stuff overthinking the theme within the group. And also I noticed a few people saying, oh, I was going to do this, but now so-and-so's done it. It doesn't matter. There's no such thing as a new idea in the whole world, really. Um, it's not the idea that's important. It's how great the photography is, how you use light and composition and all that cool stuff, how you think up a way of doing something. That's important, not not the idea itself, uh, not the way you interpret the challenge. Um, and also I know there is, you know, a few people who've been maybe a little bit anxious about this and, and about their ability. Um, and it's a very human thing to want to hang on and go, I'm not posting anything at the moment until I feel confident. Well, when is that? When, when are you going to feel confident uh, that you're competent? I'm going to suggest, well, sorry, people think oh, I'll wait until I'm competent. I'm just going to suggest try this. Try taking confidence in the fact that you will become competent. Yeah? And don't compare yourself to other people's pictures. Trust me, most of the images, a lot of, no, that's not fair, gazillions of the images that are being shared on this group are way, way better than the ones I'm doing in the tutorials. You know, I've got about an hour to think up an idea and then try and film it and figure out how to do it. Um, and I'm not making racing drivers excuses. But really, if I was to compare the things I'm putting in the tutorials with a lot of the stuff that's coming in on this page from people of all levels, it really wouldn't be that great. So, you know, guys, don't be anxious about that. And there's one final thing I want to say on this because I've had a few private messages and things from people who are feeling very anxious just in the world in general, not surprised. Look at what's going on out in the world. It's a scary place. Um, and I just wanted to say, if you are not sure who to talk to or where to go, I've been in that place a few years ago. I was right, I, I was right on the edge of full blown nervous depression and I was still doing my bouncy happy mic personality and I didn't know who to stop and who to talk to. Uh, there's a link below this to a friend of mine who you may have seen in one of my videos, Alexandra Massey, who is a world best-selling author on anxiety and depression. So if you are someone in that place, click that link and see what Alex can do to help you. So where are we? We've got so many pictures to look at, guys. How exciting is that? Let me just have a quick look on my other thing. I just want to see what's going on. Wow, look at all these gazillions of comments coming in. Wow, wow, wow. Yes, uh, sorry, Jean, sorry, I meant to address this. There may be a hiss, there may be a background noise. As I think most of you know now, 
I am um, a digital vagrant because despite having just invested a lot of money in satellite broadband to try and get my speed up so I can broadcast from my office, I can't do that. Um, so I am currently broadcasting from a good friend of mine's office uh, and there's a server running down there. It may be a bit whiny. I'm sorry, there is nothing I can do about that. Um, as long as you can hear, that's the important thing. So we have got so many images to go through this evening. It's not true. So I think without further ado, uh, we had better get going. Uh, yeah, there may be a bit, no discernible hiss on my end. Okay, sounds clear. Good. As long as you can hear, there may be a little bit of interference, but let's just live with it. So let's get ourselves sorted out and have a look at some of our images. Now then, Philip Gray. <laughs> I expect everyone saw this, but it's a bit of fun. And I just wanted to say that's really cool. And I want to say a big thank you to some of the very, very kind comments that people posted on that shot. Um, really, really cool, Philip. Thank you so much. Um, and I also wanted to look at this shot of yours, Philip, where you used that thing that you made. Because... You've got the most stunningly gorgeous light on the chair. It really is beautiful light on the back of that chair. Now, I don't know whether you position the magazines purposefully like that, whether, whether there should be light on the magazines or whether you could have moved the magazines just a bit so there's not quite so much light on that corner of them. Um, great idea. Part of me wonders whether the shot might have worked better the other way up. I don't know. Maybe you've tried it. But... I just wanted to give you a shout out because it is a really great idea and the light on that chair is fantastic and it's a shame it somehow needs a little bit of something where your reading materials are I think um, I really do uh, right let's have a look at the next one now we were talking about you know overthinking it trying to trying to think too much about the theme and um, this is a great idea, Bob, but I think it's very easy to get a little bit lost in the idea rather than the photography. I get it. And I also get this is probably a very, very personal and emotive thing for you. Um, but as an image, as a photo for someone else to look at, it's kind of like, where do we look? Not quite sure what I'm meant to be looking at. It's a little bit too busy. Um, I get where you're going, Bob. I really, really do, but I, I think it's just a little bit too busy. Um, and I think this is another one where we've got a great idea, Julia, I believe. Forgive me again. This is so small on my screen. Let me see if I can make it bigger. Um, great idea. I totally, totally get where you're going with this, Julia, um, about, you know, the grapes from, you know, the little bud through to... I'm looking at on a bigger screen here. Forgive me, I'm not ignoring you guys. Hang on, I haven't put the right shot on, have I? Here we go. That's better. Julia, great idea. I get it. From the from the bud to the grape to the glass, I get it. And I can see, you said yourself, you said you think it's a rubbish photo. I wouldn't go quite that far. Don't be that hard on yourself. <clears throat> but it's easy to get lost in the idea. How could we have improved this photographically? Um, you know, I think maybe more light coming through the back of the glass. We're looking at it kind of from the seated position, like you often see a glass on a table in front of you. And it's kind of when you look at something the way we normally view something, our brain sort of goes, yeah, I've seen that before, and kind of ignores it. If you can find a way to shoot it from a slightly different angle with slightly different noticeable light, that's when something becomes eye-catching. Great idea. Totally great idea. I'm sorry, it didn't quite work. Uh, we've got a similar thing here, Walter. Um, I've got the wrong picture on my screen here, so something's gone wrong. Walter, yeah, it's a nice idea. I get where you're going. The light is just too harsh. I'm not sure how you've lit it, but it, it's too harsh. The light source is probably too small. It's causing very, very hard light. Um, and 
it's also not quite sharp. I'm sorry, it's a great idea. And I, and I like the way you've thought about it and you've kind of backlit the glass to, to make it stand out, to make it pop, to make it sing. But unfortunately it's not quite sharp and the light is really a little bit too hard. How can you make it softer? Put some tracing paper or something over the front of the light source, move the light source further back. That is the way you can do it. I think this is beautiful light, fabulous thing going on here from Stephen. I really do like this and I had to give you a shout out no matter what. Um, really beautiful light you've got going on here. You've got a lovely composition and I love the way you've kind of built in the idea of a bit of negative space off on the left of the image there. Um, this is something I'm seeing this great recurrent theme going on where you guys are starting to build on things and that's what photography is you know we did a thing you know we've done some things with light with composition and then we started playing around with negative space and it's really really cool the way you're building one thing on top of the other that's how the world works that's how it works fantastic job love this shot steam uh, all I can say is that on my screen, I'm looking at it here on the other monitor, it isn't quite sharp. Um, I don't know whether that's a Facebook compression thing. <laughs> I had so many of you guys in my folder to choose runners up and winner from this, this time. It's not true and it took forever. And unfortunately, I can't choose them all. You were in that folder, as were several that we're going to be looking at tonight. I'm sorry you didn't get further, but it's a great shot. This one, I just want to have a little chat with you, Vim. Um, another, I, I see where you're going with this. I get the idea, I get the theme, but the photography itself hasn't quite worked. I think, had you been shooting this a little earlier before it got quite so dark, I love the moody sky, but you see how much darker the sky is than the foreground, where, where, where the, the, uh, you know, the bright areas are and the shadows have gone completely dark. This is one of those things about controlling the light. Maybe if you could reduce the light on your little still life in the middle um, so that you could have extended the exposure to allow the available light to catch up a bit, you'd have a problem with the trees unless you were to put something over those lights to cut it down a bit. But it's a really great and interesting idea. And I think this one here from Julia Julia is a beautiful idea. I really do. I think you put a lot of work into making, putting all that together. Um, I love it. It's, it's almost like a bouquet. It's almost like a bouquet of clocks and watches. Um, really well put together. Beautiful, soft, gentle light you've got going on here. Um, but again, it's not quite sharp, or at least not on my screen it isn't. Um, but it is a really, really beautiful little arrangement. But looking at it, I can't... The, maybe the depth of field's too small. Possibly on the square watch in the middle, there's a little bit of sharpness on a corner. Maybe a slightly smaller aperture, longer shutter speed. What does that mean? It means you've got to use a tripod. But, great idea. And this, I think, is a stunningly great idea from Amaral Nain Torres. I really do. I love the idea, you know, of, of the sands running through time. I've also just noticed there isn't a hashtag on that. I'm not sure if that's an entry or whether I've made a mistake and just got carried away because I thought it was a grey image. Um, I'll give you some feedback anyway. Um, it is a great idea. I think the sand being used looks to me like it was a bit damp. And so it's not kind of falling as grains, it's falling as clumps which is a shame. The other thing is the light is so strong catching on, on, the, on your arm or whoever's arm it is. If you could have maybe worn black and then moved back so you're behind the arms, behind the hands, then the arm would have been hidden behind the hands. Does that make sense? So it's like if I'm going like this, if you look at the, hang on, let's see if I can just do this and quickly show you. Look, if I've got my arm like this, You've got lots of arm going on, you know, as I'm holding something. But if you could kind of go like this. Oh, sorry, the chair won't move. Do you see what I mean? We're kind of losing those arms a bit. And if those arms were in black, so they disappeared against that black background, I think it might have worked a lot better. 
Um, but a great effort, really great effort. This, I think, is an astonishing piece of work. Really, really great effort. Um, Donald, I think it is, or David, hang on, bear with me. David, David Merchev. Now, David, I am guessing that you have seen some of the work of Stephen Wilkes, Day and Night. I don't know if any of you guys have heard of Stephen Wilkes. I had the privilege to meet him, even though it was only brief, when I was teaching at the Exposure International Photography Festival last autumn out in the Arab Emirates, because he was exhibiting there. And trust me, it is astonishing seeing his work. It's this capturing the transition of, of night into day in one shot and it takes a bit of doing it really does let me just show you a little bit of Stephen's work I strongly recommend you google it go and have a look I think I may have put a link underneath if not Stephen Wilkes but look at this isn't it amazing one location showing the transition from nighttime into daytime I think it's an amazing thing now something you need to know here David isn't shooting uh, time lapse. Stephen, sorry, isn't shooting time lapse. He is shooting time lapse, but he's doing it manually. He's there for oh, I don't know, 16 hours sometimes, he said. Um, and he's shooting manually because he's watching for decisive moments within his images. And then when he gets back, yes, of course, there's some amazing Photoshop work goes on here. Um, but he's sorting out all those images and finding those decisive moments that he captured such as when you go in really close into some of this stuff you will find there'll be a couple taking a selfie of themselves there may be someone on a telephone there may be someone giving someone a kiss on the cheek and this is all stuff that he is looking for when he's shooting these multiple images to bring together to create this day and night which i think is utterly astonishing i really do um but yes, yeah, so let me just come back. I was going to show you a couple more of Stephen's, Stephen Wilkes images. Go and check out his website. I'm sure I put a link below. Go and buy his book. And if you get a chance to see one of his exhibitions in person, I strongly recommend you do it. Um, but I really wanted to give you a shout out, um, David, because really, really great attempt. I'm not sure how you achieved it, how many images you blended, or whether it's just two and you brought them together. Either way great idea great idea to cover the passage of time as is this one leanne um let me just find it so i can have a better look so i've got it bigger on the screen here leanne yeah great way astrophotography setting your camera up and letting letting you know the planet rotate a little bit and getting that star blur I don't know what to say really other than you've done it really well i like the light on the side of the building we're in lockdown the rules are home or garden totally get it difficult thing to do you know i like the light on the side of the building and and the bits of tree but all i wanted to do really was give you a shout out and say really really cool stuff great piece of work it's not an easy thing to do um michael james really nice idea here and i think you've done a really cool job and how did you do this did you use a flash i don't know i haven't read it don't think it says um but i do really like it i think you must have used a flash i'm guessing what's happening is your um clock is swinging one side and then it pauses you know at the end of the swing and it catches a little bit more light and goes goes thicker and then it comes through the other way pauses it, it stays still a bit longer and it records a bit more and then i'm guessing a puff of flash in the middle i might be wrong i don't know how you did it but really cool idea the only thing i would say is it's a looks to me it's a bit underexposed um i am being picky i know it's not an easy thing to do and, and kudos and shout out to you for putting in all that effort at home in lockdown time um clive I really like this. I really do. Um, I really, really do. I like the softness of it. And to my mind, the only thing that it's lacking is it's, I, I don't know whether you meant it to be misty towards the bottom or something. I, I can see it's a multiple exposure um, and it's a very well done multiple exposure. Um, 
I just think the bottom of the shot could have done with being a little darker. We got the darker at the top, and I just think the bottom could have been a little darker. I, to me, I find that, that brighter area down the bottom to be just a bit distracting. Um, I don't know. I, I need to ask you guys some questions. Yeah, I love the mood as well. Heat mover, I completely. And it does give a lovely warm glow. Warm glow. What do you think, guys? Do you think maybe if it was a little darker towards the bottom, just fading out? And I'm only talking a bit. I'm not talking like dark black. I'm just saying a little bit. So we've still got that misty etherealness. But to me, I find the brightness towards the bottom is just competing a bit with the brightness of the candles. Only wants to be a tiny little bit. What about a black background? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Everybody has their ideas. Personally, I think a black background would be too, too, too much. Um, I think it makes more sense to have it darker at the bottom. Glow should be at the top. Yeah, okay. Well, there is a general consensus, and you guys know you are completely free to disagree with me at any point in time. Um, great attempt, David. Great attempt. Um, and I think this was a lot of work, too. I really do. Who's this, Jim? Jim, you did a lot of work on that, and you got some great light. To me, I don't quite know where to look. I, I know the watches are a bit bigger towards the bottom. I, I find it a little bit difficult to look at. It could probably work quite well as a poster image, you know. You imagine it quite big. It would be one of those, like, almost like an Isha thing. Um, I do, I, I like this idea, but somehow to me it, it doesn't quite work. I wish I could tell you how to make it work. I, to me, I just find I'm not quite sure where to look. I see there's a few comments coming in. Guys, keep commenting. Um, you know, again, we're all free to voice our opinions. It's like, I want to encourage you to invoice your, your opinions. The only thing I would say is, you know, think about a way to voice an opinion without making the other person wrong, without going, you did this wrong, I'd have done this. You know, this isn't an ego competition. It's just about, you know what, I really like your idea, but you know, just, just think and be gentle. But yeah, I, I think it's a really interesting shot. I'm not sure you need to know, what, not sure you know, need to know where to look. Good point, Christine, Christine Hardwick. You can inspect every corner, has a 50s look. Mm, good point, yeah, Sue Owen. I like this one. Yeah, I like it too. I'm not sure. Um, Debs. Debs Evans, you're frightening me. <laughs> you're frightening me, Debs. <laughs> but I do like your idea. And I also like your light and your, dare I use the word, execution. <laughs> but... I really do. I just, I just think it, it's highly amusing. I don't know what you did the blood with, but it, it, the, the jammy blood. Um, and I don't know how many clocks you smashed in the doing of this, but um, really well done, Debs. And actually, it really is a pretty good photo. I like the way you've used the space in the frame. I like the lines and, and, and you know, the very, very simple color tones and all the rest of it. Great idea. Um, great idea. I think the blood's a little splodgy, and maybe a little bit on, on, on the woodwork, but yeah, it's such good fun. Such good fun. Really well executed. Um, Julia, I liked this idea, Julia Kelly. Um, my thing is, it's, it's, again, it looks a little bit underexposed. It looks much better on, on this one. I don't know how it looks on YouTube. Let me have a quick look and see if I can see it on the screen here. Yeah, I think it looks better on the YouTube than it does on my <coughs> laptop here. Um, it's a geophys geophysicist. Yeah, killing time is an attractive thought now and then. <laughs> um, yeah, really, really nice idea. It's not quite sharp. Um, and I get it, it's difficult. I guess it was in low light. But also, I'm just talking of light. You see the light on the left hand, as in that's the right hand we're looking at, but the thumb of the left hand. We've got a little bit of light going on on the thumb. I think it might have worked better if the little bit of light was just touching on the watches. I like the reflection going on. Maybe if you'd moved to the left a little bit further, right across the board. Um, you know, the whole thing, a little bit to the left. We'd had a little bit nicer light. But the main thing is not quite sharp. Tripod, that would work well. By the way, uh, guys, if you're shooting indoors on a tripod, 
this is something to watch out for because this whole wobbly thing yeah you do need a sturdy tripod a cheap wobbly tripod is in my opinion a waste of time go buy yourself some beer or something it really is better spent doing that than it is buying a cheap wobbly tripod um, but even if you've got a really sturdy tripod if you're on something like carpet it can vibrate on the carpet if you same thing if you're on grass outside if you're on some springy grass in a park or something you're using a tripod even if it's a really sturdy one it can still wobble on the grass and things like that shooting indoors even with a tripod can be very very tricky indeed on these sorts of things this one here i really like kevin i really like this shot kevin guys a few comments a little bit of you know to me there's just two things that are needed in this shot because it is beautifully done lovely combination of black and gold what are the two things we just need in here Yvonne Williams always tripod and 10 second delay so I could stand away before the shutter goes got it um, the only thing with that the 10 second delay is sometimes the shutter itself moving can be enough to make the camera vibrate if it's on carpet uh, right what do we need the hands the hands the hands the hands do weights help a cheap tripod no just don't buy a cheap tripod honestly it, it'll, it'll just wobble um, but no it doesn't have to be not cheap it needs to be sturdy. You can pick up brilliant sturdy second-hand tripods for not very much money, particularly older models. What doesn't work is if it's wobbly, plasticky. Um, how much money you spend doesn't matter. Needs the hands, needs the hands. Yeah, exactly. That's the only thing I would say. Um, Kevin, really beautifully executed, really beautifully executed. I love the gold warm tones, the gold and the black. Black and gold, they're just best mates, they work. We just needed the hands something like that but really great effort let's go on to the next one this i really like this by the way <laughs> some some of you guys the, these are also ones that were in my oh i love that that's going in a favorites folder and i had to we call it kill your children in editing and it's a shame because they're really great shots i love the way you put this together um i love the way you put this together janet I really like the light. I love that hard line on the left and the way you've got the gold chain just, just kind of hanging over the edge. Very reminiscent of our snail shot last week, remember? That hard line with the snail, move him off the hard line, loses its power. Same thing going on here. And I love that. I don't know if you took that idea from there and built on it. That's what it's about. This is what I mean about when, when you, if any of you guys see something going, oh, I had that idea, I can't do it, someone else has done it. No, 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 nonsense. You will put your own angle interpretation onto it. There isn't a very, there are very few new ideas left in this sort of thing. Someone has done it already somewhere. Just do it well. That's all that matters. Think about your photography rather than the idea. Um, yeah. I, I just love this shot. I think maybe it's a little too too black, maybe top right corner. If there was just a hint of detail in that dark shadow. I'm sorry you're not in the points. As I say, it was so tough. I had to take so many pictures out of things. Srinvas just said, wouldn't it be copying? Well, no, of course not. Um, right, somebody has the idea they're gonna write a book. And then you sit at home and go, oh, I was going to write a book too. Someone else has beat me to it. They've written a book. No, absolutely not. It's, it's not. <laughs> we all do this stuff. Is it about copying? No. If you had that idea and someone else had that idea, great. Yeah, it's, it's put your own spin on it. It's like, sure, if you looked at this shot of Janet's here and then thought to yourself, right, now, how did we do this? Right, I need red and I need this. I need a watch identical to that yeah put your own spin on it okay it's a nice idea how can i use it how can i put my own thing um yeah lovely negative space neil i completely agree uh, and i love the idea beautifully done janet beautifully done i am sorry i haven't got you in the points it was so hard this week i'm going to be apologizing a lot another great idea here um Buster de Hond, lovely idea, really is. I just love it, you know, time flies, moving, time's moving. I just think it is such a great concept. Um, but again, it's like, 
did you get a little bit lost in the idea, in the execution of the idea and getting the movement and miss something in the photography end because it's just a bit underexposed. Um, so great, so great. Um, you just needed more exposure. And I think that's all it needed. Just let that shutter stay open a little bit longer or something. And then as you slide that clock, great idea. Um, and this was a great idea. <clears throat> but again, a little bit of thought on the angle you shoot it from, Yvonne. Um, and it's not sharp. Similar problem. I don't know. Um, was it you who said you used a tripod? Um, yeah. It is tricky. You need a good sturdy tripod if it's on carpet, grass, something spongy. You would have to, have to allow for that. That's the time to weigh it down heavy. If you've got a, a, a plasticky wobbly tripod, even if you weigh it down heavy, it won't make any difference because it's plasticky and it's wobbly. If anything, it might make it worse. Just make sure it's something sturdy. Um, I think the angle could have been possibly, I get it. I think you're trying for an interesting angle. But the biggest problem is it's not quite sharp. So watch out for your sharpness. Here we have another one of those images, which is just so good. I hate myself for not having this as a runner up or a winner even, but I couldn't. Uh, Ian, such a great shot. Love your use of negative space and love the multiple hands on the clock. That's so cool. Did you Photoshop that? I don't know what you did. Is it a clock with multiple hands? I have no idea. I absolutely, I just think it's cracking. I really do. I can't possibly suggest how you could improve it. If, okay, if I want to be really picky, really, really picky, maybe if you could have diffused the light just a tiny bit, you might have lost the, the, that burnt highlight on the gold. It could have done with being slight. And that is so picky. It's not true. Um, such a great shot. Love your use of shape, negative space, colours, and, and that whole idea of the, the multiple hands on the clock. So great. So great. Congratulations. Here's another great idea for time. Such a cool idea. And it's really, you know, it's not quite sharp. This is the problem, Perka Pair. It's... it's it's a really great idea. I love the slightly mottled grey background you've got going on there. Um, I like the use of colours. You know, it's just green and grey and white, and that's about it. It's so simple. Maybe, okay, it needs to be a bit sharper, and I'm just going to suggest, guys, this is a question. What do you think? Remember our negative space conversation last uh, week or a week before, whenever it was? <clears throat> How about if we had a little bit less stalk? Or maybe just move the stalk, even, even leave the stalk where it is, but just gave it more negative space, gave it room to breathe. I think the green and the stalk and the little dandelion seed clock would be even stronger. What do you think, guys? My idea is to give it a bit more negative space and maybe a little bit less green stalk, because the green stalk to me is fight, fighting with the dandelion clock. What do you think? More negative space. A little bit more space. Stalk as it is works for you, Basil. Got it. I think the stalk would work for me if, it, if there was a little bit, just a bit more space around it. But um, stalk coming out lower light. Yeah, well, I think it is doing that a bit. But yeah, crop the right hand, crop the right hand side and give it less space, Dolores. Hmm, interesting. Um, needs light from a different angle. Yes, that is a good point. Who said that? Dual 3D. Maybe if you could have had some light coming behind it, it would separate it from the background and bring those little whiskers to life. That is a very good point. Um, shoot from further back, yeah, more negative space. Heat Mover 144 says he quite likes, or he or she quite likes the softness. Get it, uh, Tanri is saying crop the top. And see, that would make it even tighter. I wouldn't, uh, yeah, if you like that, great. See, I would give it way more space. But that's just me, I'm a negative space junkie. Um, here we go. Now, this is another almost slightly disturbing image, but oh boy, do I love it. Keith Grant, that is such, such a powerful image. That is such a powerful picture. Uh, what do you feel, guys? When you look at this, what do you feel? What feeling does it give you? Does it provoke an emotion? Does it 
What does it do for you when you look at this shot? I'm just really intrigued to know. Spooky images from the gods, says Basil. Creepy, but a good image. Is it creepy? I don't know. Um, yeah, exactly. It says movies to me. It says the pictures. It says the movies. Um, this reminds me of the David Bowie album cover, Disturbed, Back in Time, Love It, Morbid Fascination. <clears throat> yeah, and I mean, okay, it's slightly morbid, but, you know, it, it, it's kind of a reminder that we're only here on this planet for a relatively short space of time, so we really ought to grab life by the cojones and make sure we live it, you know? Um to me it's a very powerful image and I will wax philosophical about such things you know the thing is everybody dies at some point but how many really live you know how many really go yeah I want to do this I'm going to do everything to make it happen but I think that's a very very powerful image Keith this was in my this has got to be a runner up or a winner folder the minute I saw it I screen grabbed it and popped it in there and I've had to be so ruthless I've had to be so ruthless um, I just feel it needed any little teeny weeny little bit more depth of field. That's all. But I, I get it. I guess you were probably focusing getting it on the pennies. And if that's a self portrait, you did that of yourself. That is an astonishing job. <clears throat> the light's great. The black and white is absolutely perfect. Great shot. Great shot. Here we have. It's the life in your years, not the years in your life that count. Ahmed Berber's very, very true. Susie Natman. What a cool idea. <laughs> cool, eyes, pun intended. But what a great idea. Really, what a really great idea. Um, I really do get it. What's the theme, guys? What, what comes at you when you look at that shot? What comes at you? What, what goes into your head? What is it? And it's, of course, time-related. What is it? Exactly, Jean or Jean, I'm not sure. Frozen in time. Frozen in time. Exactly. Frozen in time. Glacier Activity says, oh, frozen in time. Now I see it. I love that, given that your avatar is Glacier Activity. <laughs> frozen in time. How fabulous. Um, really, really, really great idea. <clears throat> now... The problem you've got here, Susie, is the ice is cloudy and it's full of bubbles. Now, it's not easy to get clear ice, but there is a way. If you do a bit of Google searching, you will find it. Um, the bottom line is you need if you either use distilled water, purified water, you know, distilled. Um, what's the word? There's another word for distilled. Doesn't matter. Demineralized water. Or if you get a pan of, you know, tap water, boil it. Boil it for a good sort of five minutes, then let it cool. Cool right down, then boil it again. This starts to remove impurities. Um, you'll get a little bit maybe of sediment and bits in the bottom. That's what causes the cloudiness. These little bits attract oxygen during the freezing process. Um, then you need to take your purified water and very, very carefully, try not to get the bit in the bottom. There won't be much in there. You may not even see it, but it's there, trust me. Take that water and then uh, if you Put your watch into whatever you're going to freeze it in. Put your water in there. And then you put your, if you like, your mould with the watch and the, and the water in it inside a little cooler box. And then put the whole thing inside a freezer. What happens is the ice forms from the top down because the little cooler box inside the freezer insulates around the bottom and the sides so that the ice forms from the top down and as it freezes in one direction going from the top down it starts to push any remaining bits of oxygen air bubbles and impurities down toward right you can take it out before it's fully frozen and then any impurities are left in the bottom you've got a perfectly clear piece of ice <coughs> um uh sean just with french touch thank you sorry i mispronounced your name sorry you can either lift it out just before it freezes or if you do let it freeze it doesn't really matter because you can put your your internal little cooler box you know a polystyrene one something like that don't use a really rigid plastic one because the ice will expand and it will break your cooler box um, you can always stand it in some hot water 
yeah if you've got a bit of cloudiness in the bottom don't try and cut it off just take your block of ice and just put that into some hot water and just melt off the cloudiness from the bottom and you've got a crystal clear block of ice have a look on youtube have a look on google you will find videos and all sorts of things about that but a really great idea frozen in time how cool is that cool i said it again sorry can't help it this to me is another thing on a similar vein what is it guys come on what is it what is it what is it what do you see it's so obvious what do you see it's all to do with time post some comments exactly jane exactly yeah isn't it a really cool idea great bit of photoshop work i'm guessing it's photoshop work i don't know it looks like it might be photoshop work but it's very well done um yeah stitch in time <clears throat> really well done perfectly lit beautifully lit i i like the way that um the lighting's done i like the fact that it's in black and white to me that just works the only thing i'm not sure about is we seem to have a hand missing off the clock now whether that hand went up and it's behind the stitch i don't know um maybe you did it like so the stitch has taken the place of the hand i don't i don't know i think i'd have liked to have seen another hand on there but really really great job peter really really great job really great this is another piece of great i think this is a really clever beautifully done piece of digital art um to me this just says oh i've just read it time flies well done jane <clears throat> That must have taken you quite a long time to create that and again it's 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 a very very well done piece of digital art and if you use photoshop I don't, I don't know what you use to do it it doesn't matter it came out of your head and you created something really great it is fantastic it really is another shout out to you and i'm again i'm sorry you're not in the winners and runners up folder this one i really love too I just think it's really great again negative space i love the the diagonal light the light is gorgeous the fact we've got just a little bit of detail in the shadows i don't know if you can see it in the youtube video i certainly can on my monitor there's a little bit of detail the shadow isn't fully blocked up i just really like it it's just kind of moody atmospheric maybe a tiny hint more light on the camera but they're not fully blocked up really nicely done i love the fact that even that shadow off to the left of the shot it isn't blocked up it's not black really really great job um the shadow is a ship model okay of course it is yes i can see that now where did it go it's moving too fast i can't keep up um absolutely great really really well done and i'll just have to give you a shout out and also i love the fact that you kind of shared with us how you did it which i think is absolutely super cool and you know this guy's just kind of reinforces what i've been saying in my training for years and years and years and it has really been an uphill battle in many ways lockdown has done me a favor <clears throat> so i've been saying to people you can do this anywhere you can do it in your own home and and you guys are in my experience pretty much unique in that you really are um and i totally salute you for that for for putting in the work and for giving it a go and you are making a difference this is a shot i love very different very different it's another annette vorm and much as i just i just get it guys what do you feel when you look at this what is your feeling does it provoke an emotion if it does what is that emotion what how does it sit for you because i also get that for some this could be a controversial one you may ask yourself the question does this actually fit the brief how is this time um i don't know and it's very different to the others we got lots and lots and lots of clocks and watches what do you think how do you how do you feel when you look at it what are your thoughts empty nest basil says sorrow um bob williams close the door behind you you sound like my dad um such powerful and sad image i totally agree bearer clive 
leaving childhood behind could have done without the photo says Glyn I get this been through it says David Cunningham yeah I'm really really I love it that it, it's touched a little thing for so many of you and it's another one that I, I was taking in and out of my, my folder in and out in and out in and out and eventually I just had to sort of just go right just scan them quickly go with your gut <clears throat> such a great shot Annette such a great shot although also Annette you have been in our winners and runners up rather a lot I, I do like your emotive images I really do um, Mark I need to talk to you about this one Mark this is I really like this idea I really do I just think it's quirky funny and I like your idea I like the way you've arranged the shot with the clock high and uh, the guy having a beer down low uh, I don't know if it's a self-portrait of you it doesn't matter there's something about it I find quirky and amusing but there's also a couple of things that don't quite work and that's just I just want to help you try and get over that um, it's the reflection of the lights in the room in the clock it, they are such a distraction could you have I don't know somehow put something behind the clock just to move the clock a little bit one way or the other I don't know it looks like that clock is hanging on the wall from the shadow maybe you couldn't but if you could have found a way just to do something with those lights um, the other thing is there's something I don't know if it's there on purpose I don't know if it adds or subtracts there's a little thing in the bottom left corner but the most important thing that doesn't really bother me much is the fact that you to me I just feel you needed to move back a little bit so that you and the beer glass are kind of in that space between the little I guess it's the corner of a chair or something in the bottom left corner and I, th I think it's a fireplace or something I'm, I can't quite tell but I feel you need to be in that little white space and then I just think it's quirky and it's fun the only other thing I would say is probably a little bit more exposure to me I, I know I like things a little bit brighter than some maybe you wanted to keep it that way but the other thing is light maybe if you could have found a light I don't know a desk lamp anything something and just put it in front so it's coming back so the light is kind of washing this way across your face we'd have had some great shapes and textures but um, what's this chair edge drives me crazy but a nice idea uh, also some sensor spots on the beer photo mm, yeah I'm good at the sensor spot myself yeah it does look a bit like something needs cleaning um, yeah some great ideas keep your ideas coming guys and also i sorry i forgot to say you know if you've got some questions and you know keep, keep put them in put them in ask your questions i know we can move a bit faster now because i managed to ramp up the latency but please if you've got a question comes to mind post it now emmeline my awesome pa is there she will be harvesting them and feeding them to the end so if you have a, a question you know you want to ask please post it emma will grab it and feed it to me at, and i'll see it at the end um yeah lovely idea lovely idea what do we got here this one is another one I really like and I like this one being a little bit moody uh, who is it Lisa Rene I really do like this to me there's just a <laughs> there's that little highlight that little reflection in the top edge of the clock which I'm not sure if it helps I like the fact it's a bit dark I like the fact that it's a bit moody the only thing I'm not sure about is that that bar right through the middle I don't know could you have maybe moved a bit up or down I think maybe down a touch I'm not sure to me that it just it's too much that that horizontal bar what do you think guys bar or no bar um, bar or no bar in Lisa's image how do you get ceiling light reflection from glass very annoying Emma see if you can grab Chrissy Kelly's question I'll see if I can address it later um, yeah bar or no bar no bar no bar no bar now we can't lose the bar completely Steve Stone's happy with the bar cool um, bar but lowered down Jenny 
rice wig i kind of agree with you i just think the bar needs moving rather than having it right smack with the little spigoty bit where the hands of the clock are but such a good idea i do like it i do like it to me that's prisoner of time how about you guys i i totally got it the minute i saw it prisoner in time hmm here's another one that i really like ophir cohen i just really like it it's another beautifully executed shot that in the end I, I just had to take out of my selection and, and I can't knock it, I can't tell you how to improve it, it is purely opinion based, that is all, it's just one or two others in there just kind of spoke to me a little bit louder. Um, it's a great shot, I really like your thinking, I love the way you put it together. It is just such a great shot. Simple colours, great shapes. Oh, fair. Fabulous job. Fabulous job. Um, and I love this idea too from uh, Carrie Edmund. I think we're seeing a few of your things cropping up in these things, Carrie. Um, another fabulous idea. Such a good idea. What was it? There's a movie, isn't there? Someone's faces do that and I don't remember what it was such a good idea um, a little bit of constructive criticism here maybe is I think if you could have had stronger side light it might have helped a little better the other thing is it is so difficult to do these things you can see from the 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 head shake the head wobble it's kind of going a little bit kind of like like this one of the ways I think it would work really, really well would be to use a slower shutter speed, keep the body really, really still, and then ask your model, I don't know who it is, I can't read it all now, um, to kind of, you know, but to be quite controlled about it, like that, keeping the head level and just turning it on one plane rather than letting it kind of wobble around quite so much. Um, but such a cool idea. Maybe a little bit stronger side lighting, I think it would have given it more impact. And I get it, I get it, I get it. You're working on these things and you're trying to think about exposures and shutters and apertures and da 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 da. And <clears throat> it ain't easy, but really great. Oh, this one. You know what? I really am so often just thinking, oh dear, now it's gone out of my sink. There we go. Jerry Max. You know what? As I'm looking through these, I'm just thinking, oh, I just so needed about 20 winners or something but nonetheless jerry shout out because it is a very very cool shot it's really well executed beautifully backlit the light is in just the right place <clears throat> there's just the right amount of highlight those bright bits which catch your eye they're just right on the little peak of the blue sand um, and I kind of like the fact there's another little highlight on the, on the back of the sand but nonetheless it doesn't matter the movement of those grains falling um, is just absolutely splendid it really is a great shot and I also like the other two behind and I quite like the way you've got them slightly one in front of the other what can I say I, I, I can't tell you of a way to necessarily improve it there, there's, a, there's a bright highlight bottom corner which I'm guessing is a reflection of your light if you could have somehow managed to jig it so we didn't see that I think it would help but what a great shot what a great shot I, I really do love it so guys, believe it or not, we are coming up to now the runners up. So this week we have got some really cool runners up and some agonizing choices that I had to go through. Um, really impressive. Don't forget guys, while we're going through these, post your questions so that Emma can hand them on to me. So let's, without further ado, have a look because I just think this was such a well executed thing Ian Ian Knight I just need to get my other folder going <clears throat> so I can see them properly here we go Ian Knight I really like that I really do now I don't know how you did this if you're here and you, and you can post a little comment that would be good 
Is it a Photoshop job? If it is, it's very, very well done. Is it multiple exposures? Or is it multiple flashes? You see, there are many ways you can reach Rome. If you've got your light set up, you could swing the watch. You could have one exposure in the middle. And then as the watch is moving, you could just fire other exposures, but at a lower exposure setting. I, I don't know. I'm not sure how you did it, but I just think it is very, very well done. Um, I really do think it is well done. And congratulations. I think you're a deserving runner up. Um, very strong, very well executed image. Congratulations, Ian. And I love this one too. It's a very classical image, but it's just such a simple, simple thought and idea. And it's very, very well done. Olivia Stevens, the metronome. How cool is that? You know, you've just got the right amount of blur movement in that pendulum. Um, I think it could have gone either way. I think you could have got away with the pendulum only moving a tiny bit with good blur either side. Maybe you tried it. But either way, it just works with the full spectrum swing of that metronome going backwards and forwards. It's nice and it's simple. I love the sheet music. The fact, I guess you're, you're lit in tungsten light, um, which is giving it that yellowy look. But to me, it still works. It's a very classical looking image. Um, it's absolutely great. George Baker, I just saw what you said. That one made me remove my metronome photo. Well, remember what I was saying at the beginning, you know, um, don't necessarily think, oh, someone else had an idea. Maybe it was done better than yours and you had to go at something else, whatever. But, you know, if you see someone else's idea, don't necessarily think, mm, I'm not going to do it now because someone else has. <clears throat> it's really important not to compare ourselves and I'm going to say a little bit more about that when we finish this is another runner-up of mine <sighs> oh I like this oh I like this it's just such a different way Sonia Elena Gerden what do you think I, I, I just love it I just like the light I like the colors I like the red and the green of the onion and it's just such a cool thing. I mean, we've all got an onion somewhere or some potatoes that are growing in the corner of the I mean, veg rack or in the fridge or something. Great light, great light. The light is just right. We've got little shadows going on on, on the kitchen top, on the baseboard or something like that. Um, but it's just the way those green shoots are just catching that light. Absolutely gorgeous. Really, really well done i do like it i really like that i don't know if there's anything i can say that could improve it i just really like it congratulations great job great job lovely colors we're going back into another watch one here and it's surprising because originally i was kind of veering more towards things like the onions and that but some of you did these so well uh, i just feel i have to bring you into this area andrew smith that is so well executed. It is very well executed. When you look closely at this, look at all those reflective surfaces and there is no reflections. There are no discernible reflections going on anyway. Really great light. It really picks out the watch and the clock and the workings. And it's not just because it's a clock, guys, that I'm choosing some of these. It's just that it is very very well done look at that knife look at that paper knife on the desk if you try and photograph reflective surfaces it's a nightmare to get rid of the reflections you know it picks up a reflection of the ceiling of the room of the cat being sick in the corner all that stuff it is really really tough Andrew, i don't know whether you put a lot of work into this to, to get rid of reflections how do you do that how do you get rid of reflections you literally will find sheets of black and white card, maybe gray tracing paper. And you literally, this is true. You set out your camera, look at your shot, maybe take a test shot, look at it. Right, where are these pesky reflections? Right, the knife, we've got a reflection of, I don't know, the ceiling light over there. Okay, you then get some tracing paper or some card, black card, white card, and you just have to find a way to fit it up here somewhere to block that reflection. Then you have a look at it and you're going, ah, I've got a reflection of the white card now. Okay, I need to bring it closer so that reflection has gone because the card is reflecting throughout the whole of the, the knife. 
it is a nightmare getting rid of reflections very very well done very simple colors um, I think it's great Jenny Weisfig this makes me want a glass of scotch <laughs> very good um, you can take reflections out with a polarizing filter says Cosmo yes and no you can't take hard reflections out if you stood in front of a mirror with your camera and a polarizing filter and you turn it you'll still see yourself in the mirror you will see something um, it's not going to empty that sort of thing it will re take reflections out of black surfaces but also and here's the thing you need some reflections on things such as chrome on on shiny surfaces things that really do reflect you need bright and dark areas if you look at chrome look at that knife what is it it's black white and gray that is the color of silver silver isn't a color silver is a combination of black white and gray and it's about getting rid of distracting things within it um, Susanna I really struggle with still life shots Emma grab it we'll talk about it and later but yes really great runner-up um, cracking job and this one this one Andre you frustrated me Andre because I love it it's such a simple beautiful elegant wonderfully done backlit little hourglass and I need to ask the group's opinion here but I just have to say why did you cut the bottom off <laughs> why did you cut the bottom off it's 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 great it, it is so great and I kept looking at it and going I wonder if the bottom's grown back and it hasn't um, why did you cut the bottom off Andre if you're here tell us um, might show some blue tack I get it I get it I get it it's like maybe you can find another way of doing it um, card stock for reflection mitigation okay sorry I'm not going to read that one um, why did the bottom get cut off I don't know to me this is a fabulous simple eye-catching picture and the I, I couldn't go any further with this there I mean my winner is a very very strong and well executed picture but I couldn't take this further Andre because to me it's just like ah oh, I kept going please but please grow back please grow back the bottom but there we go I love it I love it really great uh, where are we going now it, we are now about to talk about our winner so this week's photography lockdown negative winner is I'm doing the TV pause aren't I is Matthew Matthew Brown I just I can just see that in a poster I can I can just see it as a poster I can see it in Ikea or somewhere and people buying it and, as a poster it doesn't necessarily provoke an emotion within me but it's just simple it's well done and I just get it it, it somehow it is a very strong and well executed image and the only way I could choose was just continuously going back and forth back and forth where does my eye lie it was so tough Matthew congratulations you're this this week's winner I really think it's a very clean and very well done shot um, congratulations negative time reversing the beginning very very cool um, yeah fabulous what can I say all of you have done an amazing breathtaking job of everything it really does blow me away watching the level to which you guys are growing now I know there's some new members in 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 the gang and I and I welcome you but you know over the last sort of eight or ten weeks just looking at how you guys have grown it's awesome congratulations for putting in the work etc um, there's been some talk as well in the group saying about you know can we move the day because I know some people are starting to go back to work um, at this late stage I'm gonna say uh, no because it, it just makes it a little bit more difficult as I said we are having conversations about how we can extend photography lockdown after lockdown um, 
and in which case we will do something different so that to make sure everybody gets a full weekend to do things uh, in that time um, yeah so congratulations guys congratulations fabulous top job so let's go into a little bit of a question and answer thing if anyone's got any questions please um, bring them on bring them on oh there's a few flying in here uh, silent cougar just said can we take one spot in the webinars yeah absolutely there are three webinars available on my website um, I think the link is in the description below. I'm not entirely sure without going to have a look. I think I might be able to go and have a look. Um, webinars, 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 webinars. Mm, 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 mm. No, for some reason it isn't. I apologise. It will be. But if you go to my website, you will see top of the menu, webinars. No, it's, it's 9 99 for tenner for a webinar. Um, they're good webinars. I put a lot of work into creating these to make sure that they are valuable. Spaces are kind of limited. Um, and this week we are rolling them out. And I wanted you guys to be the very, very first to know about them. You don't have to book all three. You can just go and book one at a time. Book all three. Do what you like. Uh, just, just go. Have a look. Um, next questions. Let's see what we've got here. People asking why the new house. Okay, guys. As I think we addressed already, I cannot broadcast from my office. Photo lockdown was all done from a and b from a guest apartment that was empty for the duration and it's just across the way from where I live. I cannot get fast enough internet. Now, I can't use that guest house tonight because it's rented out. Someone's using it. So I have borrowed an office from a colleague, friend of mine. I am a digital nomad. I've spent a fortune having a satellite system installed at my place because I thought, well, maybe that'll work. Maybe I'll be able to get fast enough internet then. I've got fast enough internet. It is not stable enough. So I uh, don't know how we're going to work this one, but I am a digital nomad. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> the background will change as we go on, but just be aware. Yes, of course, all the social distancing rules are being strictly adhered to. Um, in fact, I may have the use of a big office uh, on an ongoing basis, which is just not being used because everybody's working from home. So there's this great big office with nobody in it. I'm not sure. We're just working on this. Chrissy Kelly, how do you get ceiling light reflection from glass? I think you're asking how do you get it out of, a ref out of light reflection from glass? Sorry, let me try again. I think Chrissy Kelly is saying, how do you remove a ceiling light reflection from glass? There are different ways you can do it. Tracing paper is a good one because it'll take away the harshness. If you can put some tracing paper or something like that. Um, if you've got glass, you may need to just change the angle, change the position because light, um, look, at, look at my glasses. Look, 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 there you go. Look at the light reflection in my glasses right now, okay? What you've got to do is change the angle of the glass. There you go, look, I'm still wearing my glasses, but now there's no reflection. If I put them back on my ears, there you go, a reflection. That's it. It's angles and stuff like that. That is how you can do that. Tenweir, can a picture be judged visually on what focal length it is taken on? You mean, can you tell by looking at a picture what focal length was used? No, not in terms of numbers. Uh, but you can have a rough, pretty good idea. Yeah, it was a short-ish one or a mid-range-ish one or a long-ish one just by the characteristics of field of view, depth of field, distortion, that kind of thing. Uh, what's called compression effect, what I call compression effect. Um, there is a webinar on focal length. Go have a look at the webinars on my website. There is one dedicated entirely to explaining and demonstrating focal length. Focal length is an incredibly powerful creative tool, often overlooked. You can revolutionize how your pictures look and feel just by understanding how to change and use your focal length. Focal length isn't just, you know, just like use a long lens to make a far off thing come closer. Use a long lens to narrow a field of view, isolate a subject within an area so that your viewer knows where to look. It's uh, all this stuff go get yourselves on the focal length webinar because i promise you you're going to love that tori hunter what are multiple exposures 
it's it's from the days of film really where all a camera used to do was you had a piece of film here there's your camera this this viewfinder you had a piece of film and you went click and the light hit the film and all the all the camera did was you wound it on and as you wound it on the bit of film went like that and the next piece of film arrived a multiple exposure was you'd wind it on but you'd tell the camera not to move the film the film stayed there and all it did was activate the shutter it would recock the shutter and so you would expose the film to light more than once so you'd expose it to light and then change and do it again you can do something similar with a digital camera of course there's no film to move what it's what it's doing is exposing if you like one capture on the sensor to multiple pops of light and you can change what you choose to put in them um, that is a multiple exposure Srivas Aditya, how to get a soft light using mobile phone flashlight. I don't know, I've never used a mobile phone flashlight, but the same, light is light is light is light, whatever is generating it. If you want to soften the light, bounce it off something, or diffuse it, put a piece of opaque plastic or tracing paper or something like that in front of it. But if you bounce light, that's usually a really good one. So if you've got a flash on your phone, you want to, you want to I don't know, I don't know what you're doing. Are you trying to use the phone to take a picture and, and the inbuilt flash in the phone or are you using the phone flash to light something so you can take a picture of it with a different camera you see this is this is now you're in seven building blocks of photography territory here thinking things through how do i do this one step at a time if you can bounce it great if you can't bounce it diffuse it uh, very difficult with a phone if you're trying to shoot through the phone and diffuse the flash at the same time because usually the flash and the lens are really close together so uh, it's tricky on a phone uh, you might be able to buy diffusers i don't know uh, susanna uh, look at these wonderful answers coming in in the chat you guys rock well done you see you're sharing your ideas i haven't tried it myself so i can't say um susanna smith i really struggle with lighting still life shots can you give me any advice mike yeah and no there is no like everything way to light a still life it is you've just got to learn light you just got to learn how to look at light go and please 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 just go and do my ultimate beginners course because it's a beginner thing how to understand and use and look at light how to experiment with light because there is no right or wrong it's we talked about this before where it's the it's like asking the question if I'm riding my bicycle into a corner, how much do I need to turn the handlebars to go around the corner? I don't know, how sharp's the corner, you know? Uh, if I'm coming up to a, to a junction and I want to stop, how soon do I need to put on the brakes? I don't know, how far away is the junction? How fast are you traveling? It's one of those. So it's like, I've got a still life, how do I light it? I don't know, what is the still life of? Do you want a soft, dreamy, kind of moody look? Or do you want a more directional, early morning, you know, woken up, bright and breezy look? these this is how you reverse engineer how do i want my shot to look okay i need to make light like this to make it look that way suzanne really go to the ultimate beginners course that's what it's about that's what it's about beginner stuff how to use your camera how to compose how to use light beginner stuff Boof. once you can do that then you're ready to start asking those powerful questions from the seven blocks how do i want this to look where do i need to stand what kind of focal length do i need to use for that where do i need to position those lights to get the look that i want but first you've got to learn how to use light whether that's window light sunlight daylight all that stuff robin punter do you ever delete photos you're not happy with or do you keep everything and learn from the bad ones i delete the crap out of everything um <clears throat> I don't want my hard drives cluttered up with stuff I'm never going to do anything with. Um, yeah. Yeah. Do you learn from the bad ones? Yes. And it's not so much the bad ones. They're just ones that don't work out. And I'm not talking about me here. I'm talking about everybody, the world. Yeah. Um, if something doesn't work the way you want it to, look at it. And that's where some building blocks comes in. Ask yourself powerful questions that's not how I wanted it what's what's wrong what isn't working okay you find the answer to that question right how can I change that you then need to refer back to your knowledge of light composition focal length exposure and all that stuff okay so therefore you've got your answer you then do it and then you do it again um, 
and this is for everybody. Please don't think the, the professionals go off and do stuff. There is one of my webinars, uh, How to Capture the Perfect Picture, where we talk about this. We talk about what you see published is only the very tip of the top of the pinnacle of the very, very tip of the iceberg. You don't see what happens underneath to make that work. Um, no, I do. I delete anything that I don't want to use because why keep it? Um, Sue Wilshire, do you... So do you need turn off image stabilization when on a tripod? Sue Wilson is saying, do you need to turn off image stabilization when using a tripod? Depends on your camera. Different image stabilization works different ways. Uh, I tend to turn it off just because I grew up being told to do that. Um, try it and see. All cameras are different. Try it and see. I know that Years ago, everyone said, if you've got a cannon, you must turn it off because of the way that if, if there isn't movement, the, the cannon sort of looks for it and kind of generates it. On my Nikon DSLRs, I have, on rare occasions, not turned off stabilization. And it's almost like it does a little recalibration thing. And it does a little... <laughs> and if you happen to press the shutter when it goes... <laughs> then you get a blurry picture. The Fuji, I've never noticed any difference. Um, if you want to be safe, yeah. Maybe turn it off. Uh, where are we? Jez Prime, how long is each webinar? One hour? Yeah, hour to an hour and a half. Uh, hour to an hour and a half. There are downloads and notes and things for you. There's a couple of special offers for you if you come on a webinar too, which you can't get anywhere else. Um, it's not a price, price discount. I just want to warn you of that, but there is something you can get from a webinar which you can't get anywhere else. Uh, about an hour and a half. Um, and we, of course, try and be as interactive as possible. Love interaction. I want your questions. I want you guys talking and suggesting and, and using this thing. First building block of photography. Ivana Yakubakova. What a cool name. I bet I pronounced it wrong. What if a photographer uh, has shaky hands? Um, yeah, that's a problem. I know. I know a few photographers are like this. It's difficult. Depends what you want to photograph. If it's, you know, moving stuff action, then it's not so bad because just use a fast, make sure you use a fast shutter speed. Depends, of course, how bad, you know, the shaky hands are. But camera shake is the main cause of blurred pictures, not something being out of focus. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you can get your shutter speed high, then that movement of your hands won't translate into the pictures. To get your shutter speed high, you will probably have to use much higher ISOs. I know everybody in the world goes, oh, I can't use more than 200, it'll spoil my picture. No, 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 no. No. I'd rather have a beautifully lit, interesting, sharp picture that's got a little bit of grain in it than something that's got lovely fine grain and is blurred all to hell because you couldn't get the shutter speed fast enough. To me, that is just utter nonsense and craziness um, yeah if you can use a tripod that that is a good idea if not and you need to handhold get your shutter speed as fast as you can I know the next question is what shutter speed I can't answer that in a quick answer here as I say ultimate beginners course it's a five-week course there's a whole week just devoted to making sure your pictures are sharp and all that sort of stuff as there is in the seven blocks. Trish Church, how do you do multiple exposure on a digital camera? Uh, I can't tell you, every single camera is different. Sorry, Trish, you're gonna have to go get your book out and see how you do it on yours, or maybe address it in the group, because um, maybe someone has got the same camera as you and they can help you out. I'm sorry, I can't uh, give you a clear answer on that. What do we got next? Graham, in the webinar, do I have to be on camera? I am very, no, of course not. It's the same as this, Graham. It's the same as this. Webinar is just what we're doing now, but it's a closed group. There are slides. There's a slide presentation. It's not out there on YouTube. It's private. It's just us, okay? It's not something, you know, I've got to earn a living. It's something which you guys are paying for, which is of value, and it's not freely available out there on YouTube or something. But it's very similar to what we're doing now. It's just not in a public domain. It's just you guys on the webinar. 
Um, I think we've kind of come to the end of our questions, unless there's anything else anyone wants to ask. Uh, I just want to put something in here. Ron Barber has just said, use continuous focus. If that's to address the, uh, the shaky hands thing, I would say be very, very careful with that, Ron. Sorry it, to contradict you. Continuous focus is great, but it depends on what focus mode you use and what the shot is you're taking. Like everything else in photography, you've got to understand what it is. If you're in single point autofocus, using continuous focus mode, if your shake takes the point, the autofocus point, let's say it's there between my glasses, okay? If you shake and the autofocus point just happens to go over there, you're going to be out of focus. The subject will be out of focus and it'll suddenly focus on what's going on behind, okay? I can't give you a quick answer. I want to. I really do. Guys, it is, it is frustrating. I want to go like that and take what I have learned over 30 years as a photographer and over 15 years as a world-class trainer being hired by Sheikh Sultan bin Ahmed Al Qasimi to go and teach at one of the greatest photography festivals on the planet, right? I know what I'm talking about. I want to take that and just go click. I can't do that. I can give you some great training courses that you can go and do and they'll make the difference. I'm sorry, there isn't a hack. You have to do it. You have to go through the steps, do the exercises, get the experience. I can't take it. I can't do it for you. I'm sorry. Um, Bob Bowen, can you take one Weber at, no, at a time? I think we had that question now. Yes, of course, they're, they are separate. You go and look on my website. There are three webinars. Which one do you want to do? Go book yourself on one. Uh, Gary Cleesbo, I've heard that ISO doesn't cause grain. It just reports what else has been created by the other function. I have no idea what you're talking about, Gary. I've heard that ISO doesn't cause grain. It just reports, I don't know what that means, what else has been created by the other function. I don't know what that means. I'm sorry, Greg, Gary, I've no idea what you're talking about. It sounds to me like you've been reading some internet BS. There is so much BS. Uh, I don't care whether it's called grain or noise or what it actually does. All I know is that when you increase the ISO number, you get what looks a bit like grain, as in the days of film, appear in your picture. What it is, how it's made, what the physics of it are, I don't care. It's just there. And I don't have a problem having a little bit of it in my pictures. Um, Blue Mail 76, hi mate, this is Andre. The time glass was on the ledge of my balcony. Well, that's all right. Just don't cut the bottom off. I'd rather have a little bit of the balcony ledge or something in there. Um, it's really cool. Heather Hay, will the webinars only be offered once or will you repeat them? For the time being, we're testing them to see who comes on them, see if anyone's interested. That's the bottom line. Um, it's a lot of work to run them and to set them up. Um, you know, if, if people like them and they come on them, we'll probably repeat them. Uh, the way it stands at the moment, sit, stands, whatever. Yeah, we're running three this week <clears throat> over the course of this week and we might do some more the following week, but it's one of those things, if nobody wants to come on them, if nobody books on them this week, then no point, bin them off. Um, yeah, anything else, anything else? Um, the balcony was full of pigeon crap, says Blue Mail. Blue Mail, clean it off, <laughs> right? Or get a piece of card or paper or something and put it on top of the pigeon crap, yeah? It's, it's, it, honestly, this is what photographers have to do. You've no idea. Your tag for the winner this week was a negative space and it should have been time, pardon. I'm not sure what you're saying or where that is, Graham, or whoever said that as it moved. Sorry, it's moved. I can't find that comment. Anyway, I can't keep up with that one, sorry. Um, yeah, so I think we probably reached the end of tonight's and we are gonna finish kind of on time by 8.30, which makes a difference. Um, yeah, thank you all very, very much again for being here. Thank you for being the people that you are. I truly respect all of you um, and, and, and the way you are doing what you're doing. I really do hope we can get um, this to work after lockdown again. It's one of those things, isn't it? It's uh, 
we've got to earn a living and PLD is a lot of time. I'm sure all of you guys need to be paid for the, your jobs too. And uh, I know this has been free, but there's other things which I would have to turn my attention to. So if we can make this work, I want to do it. I really do. I'll talk to you more about that later. Once again, thank you all very, very much indeed. I saw a few little comments coming in saying thank you for talking about the anxiety thing. Again, just a reminder, I'm going to share a little story with you. When I was on the edge of total and complete nervous breakdown a few years back, I was very, very overweight. Now, everyone goes, oh, jolly fat Mike, you know? Yeah, but actually that was just hiding what was going on underneath. I didn't know how to stop being jolly fat Mike, though I desperately wanted to. I didn't know who to talk to. I didn't know where to go. We have got all this anxiety and stuff going on in the world at the moment. Very frightening things the news media likes to ram down our throats. All I can say is if you are struggling with things like that and you are feeling anxious, take a look at the link below. Just go take a look, see what's what. Um, right, once again, thank you all so much. I am going to disappear now. I don't want to go, you see. I love talking to you. I don't want to go. Be well. Enjoy the next challenge. It will be going live in about 10 minutes or so time. Another awesome, awesome week. I'm sure Emma will explain whatever it was you were talking about. Hashtag. Sorry, I, I, I'm incredibly dyslexic. I read very slowly and, I, and unless it spells it out, and I, I just can't. Emma will tell me. Emma is awesome. I just want to give a big shout out to Emma as well, very, very publicly. Because I'm very blessed to be surrounded with some incredible people who are helping me do this. I know many of you think there's a great big team. There isn't. There is really Emma and I, and there was a cameraman called Joe who has had to be furloughed because we can't go out and do stuff. I have my amazing friend Paul Tansy, without whom this business would not exist. But uh, I really want to give Emma a shout out because, Em, you go so way over and above the call of duty. Um, you know, and like all businesses, we're struggling right now. And Emma made me a stunning offer to, to, to work for even less wages to make this work so that we can keep going. And uh, I truly salute and respect you. And I want all of you guys to know that, yeah, there's a struggle going on and I'm very lucky. Give Emma a round of applause, please. Right. Once again... I'm going to say goodnight, and I'm actually going to do it this time. Be well. See you in the next challenge. See you next week. Stay posted. You rock.